I want to start everybody. Uh, I want to start by asking everybody if you had problems uh, trying to make sense of S bombs. Have you tried to use an S bomb from one tool in another tool? And have you had any problems there? And have you tried to come up with your own fuzzy uh, uh, matching logic for the SBOM data that you get from different tools? So and it, pretty much the main problem with um, The main problem with um, S bombs is that they're not really standard. And what I'm going to do, I just took the takeaway slide from the very end. So it's going to be a TLDR. And then I'm going to go over some of the uh, points related to that. So there are a lot of incompatibilities uh, with, uh, with the S bomb formats. I, and I can't even call them standards because they are formats and they're pretty wide open in terms of. Uh, what you can put in them. But the key piece of the puzzle is the software identity. Without that, um, you don't have anything useful. Now, for, uh, for this to, uh, to work, we need to improve how the package identity is derived and how it's built. And right now, we have a wild west where different tools create their own ways of mining the package and software component identities. And because of that, that's one of the sources of incompatibility of uh, the data, data that you get. So what we need, we need um, uh, a set of shared package identity parser specs. So everybody can use the same thing. And even if it's not complete, uh, at least it will be consistent because right now we don't get that. And probably one of the um, you know, uh, biggest problems is um, the Java package ecosystem. There's a lot of fuzziness in terms of how the package identity is collected and derived. Um, we also need to uh, have different ways. Uh, we also need to have a way to alias um, the uh, software components and packages because there's just no way we can have one single identity. Like, I don't know, anybody believes that there's a way to have one single identity? I, like, I don't. Because uh, there are different vendors, uh, different builds, and, and all of that. You're going to have multiple identities for the same package. And right now, the existing uh, formats don't really account for it. You have, uh, you know, uh, Cyclone DX and FPDF uh, and SPDX. They have single identity fields like Perl or uh, CPE, and it's just one field. Uh, they have custom fields uh, where they try to add more, but at the standard level, there isn't much. So we need aliases, and we also need to do fuzzy matching, so we don't have to re-implement it ourselves, like every, uh, every person, every organization. Uh, if you do anything serious, there's a good chance that uh, you have to deal with that fuzzy matching logic, and you'll create your own, and then um, it's not going to be very consistent with uh, what others are doing. Um, and another source of problems is the optional fields. In the SBOM formats and the package identities, uh, th there are a lot of optional fields. And those optional fields is a huge source of incompatibility uh, when you use different tools uh, because you know, one vendor decides, hey, you know, uh, or one tool uh, builder decides, hey, you know, I'm going to use these optional uh, fields or well, I'm going to use those fields and I'm going to put different data. So uh, the more optional data you have, the less consistent and compatible you're going to uh, be right, in terms of uh, the standards. And, you know, right now we're really far away from having real standards there. Um, and 
And uh, one of the other things we need to be able to do, we need to have more, um, uh, more uh, capabilities when it comes to build time uh, S bomb generation. Because right now, most of the tools you get are either pre build time, where you scan the package manifest, or post build time, where you scan an image. But you lose, you don't have enough data in the pre build uh, scans, and uh, you no longer have uh, important data with the post build scan. So, this is another thing that you'd, you'd want. Um, and and when it comes to uh, the quality tools like uh, the SBOM scorecards, uh, we need to transition away from simply checking if a field exists. We also need to validate the quality. Um, so, you know, but the but the formats we have two main formats: Cyclone DX and SPDX. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with that. There are other tool-specific um, uh, formats, and uh, if you look. Uh, at Cyclone DX, which is probably the most security-oriented uh, spec. There are a lot of things you can have, but the most important uh, fields there are the components section and the dependencies section. Components is where you have the packages, and dependencies is, is where you have the relationships. Um, so, so when you look, even when you're using the same format, and you look at uh, the results from different tools. For example, one is from SIFT. That's one of the tools that generates SBOMs. And another one is from Trivi. Both of them, they use uh, Cyclone DX, but uh, they don't have the same fields. Uh, for example, the, uh, um, uh, the, the licenses section is missing and other fields um, are missing. Now, I'm going to skip through a lot of things because we're sort of out of time. Uh, so this is another example of inconsistencies. If you look at the results from different tools and you look at the package identities, you can't do an exact match there. If you try to do that, uh, then uh, you're not going to have uh, good results. And that's when you end up creating your own fuzzy uh, matching logic. So the key, like I said, is the software identity. And there are a few options there. Uh, CPEs is one of them. Uh, package URLs is another one. Uh, and then there are other options that are less relevant. So the problem with uh, CPEs, and it's something that uh, the National Vulnerability Database uses, is that it's um, cryptic. Uh, you need to know the dictionaries and the values, um, um, the values from the dictionaries for the vendor part and the product part. They're not natural. You can't just create uh, an identity based on what you have in your package. Now with Perl, uh, it's a lot easier to create uh, the identity or at least to understand the identity because it uses the metadata from the package managers. Uh, for example, the, uh, you know, the, um, the name and then the the the, uh, the namespace identity, but there are some gotchas uh, in terms of how that information is presented. There's a specific format. You see, slashes are supposed to represent different sections of the Perl, but you don't always have this nice uh, um, partitioning, and uh, that's also a source of uh, gotchas because. Uh, because that means you can't parse the identity properly. Now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the optional fields are uh, a big problem. So if, you, uh, if we look at the Perl format and, and you know, the format at the top, we'll see that the version is actually optional. So you can have perfectly valid uh, pearls with no version, but then is it any good? Not really. And then uh, the qualifiers uh, and also namespaces are optional and not really well defined. And again, it's a big source of incompatibility. So this is an, an example of the uh, 
qualifiers and how different they are. They represent um, the same package identity, but then you have different uh, qualifier names and different values. So again, uh, it gets messy there. And here's an example from OSV, which is um, an initiative and, and a project from Google. Um, it is vulnerability data, but still, uh, it, they have a Perl field where they have no version, and it's a valid Perl, but not really usable. So there are a lot of inconsistencies in terms of versions, too. So, you know, right there where we have the same package, but the versions are different. And again, you can't uh, do an exact match there. And uh, uh, there are a few different um, options there. Obviously, it's not a Perl standard uh, problem. It's a data quality problem. Uh, and uh, making sure that the, the vendors, uh, they have uh, consistent versions is going to take a while, but as a workaround, uh, having aliases would help. Uh, that's one of the examples. And, and another example uh, is uh, the names. They're also inconsistent, and that's also where we can benefit from the aliases. And we're out of time. Thank you.